So in this video, I'm going to cover some tips that infielders can use when a fast runner is at the plate. Now, many kids feel like they need to rush, even when they actually have plenty of time. And in my last video, I talked about the huge downside to rushing through your fielding and your throwing and how it leads to many more errors. But what about when you actually need to speed things up? For example, let's say you're playing shortstop and there is a really fast runner at the plate. What do you do? What are some things you can do so you can make the play and not cross over that line from being quick to rushing? We always want to avoid rushing. So the first thing you can do is start closer to the hitter. Now this is something that I did very often. So let's say this is, my, this is where I start on an average hitter. I would move up two steps. I would be a little bit closer. Now, the reason behind this is I wanted, to, I wanted to create the same exact tempo on a ground ball and never felt, feel the need for rushing. So if, the, if a routine ball was hit at me, I could still take the same time, I could still go through the same shuffle steps and deliver the ball to first base and still get the runner. And I'm a, I obviously know when I play a couple steps closer, I'm giving up some range, right? But on a really fast runner, if I have to range far to my right or far to my left, I am not going to make the play anyway. The, the runner's going to beat it out. So what I'm banking on is that if he hits me a routine ground ball, I don't have to rush. I can complete the play and make it. So just something as simple as being a little bit closer to the hitter, just take two steps in from where you normally position yourself and that will allow you a little bit more time. The next problem that I had when I had a fast runner at the plate was I would tend to look at the runner instead of first base. Now in practice, we field the ball, we do our thing, we look at the first baseman and we deliver the throw. But when there's a thought of a fast runner in our head, it's easy to catch the ball, look up and see where the runner is. Now the problem is when he's booking it down the line, we feel like that he's closer to first base than he really is. When that happens, we rush the throw. We try to get rid of it too quickly, or sometimes our attention is not on the actual first baseman and we throw the ball towards the runner. I did that plenty of times. So if you find yourself fielding and looking at the runner, try to eliminate that if you can. Come up, look right for the first baseman and deliver your throw to him. It's amazing, even when the runner is four steps from the bag, just when you, you gotta trust your arm. The ball moves a lot faster than a runner will. So even if you take a sneak peek and you see that, oh, he's only four or five steps from the bag, I have no chance. When you deliver the ball, oftentimes, you'll be surprised by how quick the baseball can get to first base. So remember, tip number two, look at the first baseman, don't look at the runner. Tip number three is use your feet to set up the throw and to get more power. Now, this is very similar to playing a couple steps closer to the hitter, but when we really use our feet and we're not afraid to shuffle with intent, and uh, towards first base with our direction, first off, we're covering more ground. So the throw to first base is gonna be shorter. Even if it's five feet shorter, sometimes that play at first base is bang, bang, right? So if we can get five feet shorter on our throw, it's gonna give us a better opportunity. Plus, when we are, have more intent and directional momentum with our feet, we're able to get more on the throw. So again, being able to deliver the ball harder over to first base is gonna give us a better chance as an infielder when we have a fast runner going down the line. So remember, we don't wanna throw before our feet are, have completed their move to first base. Remember, use your feet, set up your throw, power with your legs to the direction of first base and deliver a strong throw. So tip number three is use those feet. Tip number four, this was another big one, was know how to do a quick transition. Now, this isn't something you'll use for every ground ball, but it's something that you'll want to have, that you'll want to practice. Because sometimes on double play balls or balls, there's just balls in the infield that you need to get the ball out quickly. And when you know how to do it, you can do it when there is a fast runner. Very beneficial. So to me, the big difference was going from an alligator fielding, where I was right in this direction and I would push my hand down in the glove to catch the ball. That when I did that, there were times that I would push the ball down into the webbing of my glove and I would almost lose it because that's the deepest part of the glove. The quickest transition that I was able to make was when I was pinky to pinky, when I was pinky to pinky with my glove and my throwing hand. From here, when the ball would, when I would secure the ball, the ball would touch my glove, it was just a quick little turn right here and the ball was in my hand. So I didn't have to dig in for it, it was right here. 
I would always try to catch the ball right where my finger met my palm, which was right in the palm of my glove. That's the flattest part of my glove. So as soon as the ball hit, it almost ricocheted into my hand. Now it wasn't a flip or anything like that. It was a secure and then a quick turn. And from there, the ball was in my hand. So understanding a quicker transition, how to get the ball quickly into your throwing hand also helps. Remember, when it comes down to getting a fast runner, sometimes it is a millisecond. And that transfer can sometimes be the difference between a runner being safe or being out. And the final tip I have isn't really a tip, but it's just don't make the mistake of rushing. Now, if you use these four tips that I just uh, introduced to you, go through that tempo and deliver the ball to first base. If the runner beats it out, he beats it out. But I would much rather have that as a player and as a coach than trying to be too fast and launching the ball over the first baseman's head. Now all of a sudden the ball's out of play and the runner goes to second base. So do everything to try to quicken up your approach to the ball, quicken up your, your transition, quicken up your throw. Remember, start a little closer to the hitter, but go through the same tempo that you practice every day in practice. And if the runner beats it out, he beats it out. And you gotta be okay with that, right? But that's better than just launching the balls and rushing. We never, never wanna rush. So take these four tips, apply them into the game, and it will give you less stress more confidence when you do have that fast runner at the plate.